Hello, my name is Nico, and I'm with the Shared Spaces team. Today, I'll be showing you how to create a digital 3D object from scratch in the 3D modeling app Sculpt GL. We will move through all the steps from navigating the app layout, using geometry to build your object, using the sculpting options, doing texture painting, and exporting your file. Sculpt GL is a web-based modeling app, so no downloads are needed. You only need an internet connection to access this program. In this tutorial, we will be explaining some introductory sculpting tools by making the face of a little dog. I have a picture that I want to use as inspiration for this sculpt. Under the background tab, you can change the background to an image you have already downloaded. I find this very useful to use as a reference while sculpting. To navigate around the scene, use the middle mouse button to move the camera. Right click on your mouse to rotate the camera and scroll to zoom in and out. Under the camera tab, there are some advanced camera options. To change the view to specific sides of your object, you can click F, L, or T to flip between the front, left, or top sides of your object. If you hit any of these keys twice, it will show you the inverse, so the back, right, or bottom of the object. Hitting the spacebar will reset the camera, centering your selected object. You can also change camera modes from perspective to orthographic, which may be useful depending on your preferences and uses for the sculpt. Before I start, I want to point out the undo option. To undo any change you've made, hit Ctrl Z or select undo in the history tab. You can change the max stack number which modifies how many changes the program will remember and let you undo. I'm going to make sure this number is very high so I can undo more changes if needed. I also want to make a note about meshes, wireframes, and file size. A helpful option when working with 3D objects is to turn on the wireframe. This visualizes the mesh of your object, which is a framework made up of many small flat faces. Edges are the straight lines that make up each side of each face, and vertices are each corner of your face, where at least three edges meet. You can see the number of faces and vertices in your object in the top right corner of the screen. This is an important number to keep in mind, as the more faces and vertices your object has, the larger the file size will be. You can lower the file size and the resolution of your object by clicking on the Topology tab and using voxel remeshing. Quads will create a new mesh with four-sided, square-shaped faces, while manifold tries will use three-sided or triangular faces. If you will be exporting your model to a different program, be sure to know if there are file size requirements before you start sculpting. The program will start with this default sphere. If you want to delete all objects in a scene, click the Scene tab and click Clear Scene. But I will be using this sphere for the head of the dog. I roughly align my sphere with my background image as a reference. I start by using the Inflate tool, which inflates a point on your object like a balloon in a spherical manner. I make sure the Symmetry tool is selected so that each change I make is duplicated on both sides of the object. I use this tool to create puffy cheeks for the dog, as well as a round snout. The radius slider changes how much of the area you are modifying, and intensity changes how much is changed. Then I use the brush tool to create the eyes and the nose. The brush tool paints on new material in layers like a paintbrush. Here I use the negative option, which removes material from the object with the same method that the tool uses to add material. I'm using this to add more definition to the head of the dog. SculptGL's tools modify objects in a clay-like manner. This makes sculpting in this program very intuitive and easy, and it's great for making freeform creative designs. Here, you can see I use the Smooth tool, which smooths out rough lines and edges on your sculpt just like rubbing your finger across clay to smooth an edge. Next, I want to create ears for the dog. For this, I'm going to add a new object to my scene. There are four shapes available for new objects in this program. Spheres, 
cubes, cylinders, and toruses. I'm using another sphere to make the ear. First, I use the transform tool to flatten and stretch the sphere into a pancake shape by dragging on these squares. Then I use the move tool to push and pull at the object until it looks how I want it to, like a floppy dog ear. Then I move and modify the ear using the transform tool. The arrows move the object in the arrow's direction and the faces of this middle square moves the object anywhere on that plane. You can stretch and compress the object by dragging on the squares here. You can rotate by dragging the colorful curves of the circle. And you can make the object bigger or smaller by dragging on this outermost circle. Now, I want a second identical ear for the other side. To duplicate an object, click the Scene tab and click Copy Selection. It won't look like anything has changed right away, but it has created a second copy of your object at the exact same location. You can use the Transform tool to move the copied object where you want it. Next, let's paint our dog. The Paint tool adds to the material of your object, changing the color, but not modifying its shape. If you want to paint the whole object in one color, you can click the Paint All button. Otherwise, you can use your mouse to add details. The radius slider changes the size of your paintbrush. Intensity changes the opacity of the color, and hardness changes how hard the edges of your lines are. You can use the color picker to match to a color you've already painted if you want to. I've sped up the painting process, but you can see here how I keep the symmetry tool on to make sure the face I'm painting is symmetrical on the left and right side of the head. I would recommend not painting until you've totally finished sculpting your object, as any stretching or remeshing can start to blur or mess up your paint job. Next, I connect the two ear shapes to the head of the dog by selecting both ears and the head while holding the shift key. Then I click the scene tab and click merge selection. This sticks the selected objects together so they can be moved and modified as a unit. However, the objects are still three distinct meshes. You can see that by going to the rendering window and increasing the transparency. The ears are still their original full shape, just stuck inside the head. If you need your sculpt to be one unified mesh, where all of your vertexes connect together, be sure to remesh your object. Now you can see the overlapping internal bits have been erased and only the outside of the mesh remains. Now it is all one connected piece. When you are all finished, you can export your model by clicking the Files tab in the top left of the screen. Object and FBX files are often good choices for working with AR, but STL files will be able to be brought into slicing softwares to prepare a model for 3D printing. This exported OBJ file contains all the information from your sculpt, but other exporting options may save your sculpt and your material in separate files. Basic 3D modeling is just one of the steps that we cover in our AR production pathway learning materials. Please visit our Shared Spaces website or YouTube channel to find other videos for your augmented reality workflow.